Hello! Take a seat there by the fire. I really like this next story about how a group of adventurers ended up taking a page from Pokemon. How my players captured a Balor in a Pokeball. R slash D&D stories posted by Scattered Cloud. I DM a 5e game for a group of 6 players all level 8 or 9. We have a druid, monk, cleric, necromancer, rogue slash sorcerer, and a warlock slash sorcerer. They had gone into the sewers of a major city seeking a group of missing guards. What they found was a wizard's lair filled to the brim with fiends, dretches, quizzits, imps, driders, and a smattering of other demon or mad magician style monsters. When they found the missing guards, they learned the story of the lair. The guards had gone into the sewers on a secret mission to secure an unknown threat. They too had discovered the mage's lair and had needed to fight through dozens of demons, not to mention the mage's defenses, many of which pointed towards the mage trying to fight off the demons. Their goal had been to capture the mage, but when they entered the final rooms of the lair, they instead found several summoning rooms, one of which had a massive balor, chained up and in magical stasis. The guards had also discovered a book full of dark rituals. They attempted to banish the balor, but had unleashed a curse, transforming them into drow, which prevented them from returning to the surface. Drow plus sunlight equals no fun for the drow. With this knowledge, our heroes headed into the final portion of the lair, seeking the demon and the as yet undiscovered mage who started it all. For context, the players had already found a woman trapped in a magical cage which hurt anybody who touched it. Per the woman's instructions, they found and used five keys in the form of rusty blades with only one key remaining. The druid was suspicious of the woman, but the party is typically good guyish, when not robbing banks or stealing from temples. They had also discovered a box of magic items left behind by the mage. The purpose of the items was to help them get past the prismatic wall, one of the mage's defenses, but since they had found a creative alternate route using heat metal and ray of frost then the monks water whip to cut through the metal grates they still had these items one of them was a bag of force beads now back to the present so the party finds the summoning chambers one of them contains a teleportation circle and the other one contains the sleeping balor this thing is huge, about 13 feet tall, massive wings, a whip-like tail, and red flesh, all wreathed in flames. They also find the entrance to a sealed chamber. The door is kept closed by magic, so the rogue is unable to open it. So they start looking through their various spells, skills, and items when they remember the items meant for the prismatic wall. They had already used up the scroll of dispel magic to defeeble mind the rogue after an unfortunate attempt to test how a trap worked. But they did have a scroll of pass wall. Perfect! One incantation later, and they have tunneled their way into the sealed chamber, where they finally find the mage, floating in the spear, with his eyes closed. They wake him up and start talking to him, and quickly find out he's a mage of the Mad Variety. He tells them how he was curious about other worlds, including places like the Hells, which is where all fiends are in my game not just devils. He had summoned these demons because he wanted to chat. Turns out though, that's actually a bad idea. Go figure. 
Well, anyway, he trapped the most dangerous ones, put up defenses, then put himself into a stasis spear so he could concentrate on keeping the Balor trapped. Except now, his concentration was broken. The Balor in the next room roars. The party panics. As an afterthought, the mage asked them, Say, you didn't free the lady in the cage, did you? Nasty one, that. Calls herself the Lady of Blades, trapped her in an inescapable prison, and used her own blades to bind her. The cleric having miscounted says they only opened four of the six locks, and the mage assures them that everything is fine. The sounds of an inescapable prison being shattered rings through the air. Panic worsens. The Lady of Blades is on the loose, but the Balor is the more present problem. The party has gathered the guards and is arguing about how to deal the Balor when it begins breaking the chains that bind it. The party spring into actions. The guards act like good little red shirts, taking the blunt of the demon's assault while the party slings as much range stuff as they can. No one wants to go in that room. The monk uses her water whip to trip the Balor, which at this point only has a single chain around its neck. It can't go prone, but it gets choked a bit. It doesn't like that very much. It locks eyes with the monk and smiles as it shatters its final chain. It begins to approach. The rogue asks the mad wizard if he's going to help. Spoiler alert, he isn't. Thinking fast, the monk digs through her pouch and finds the beads of force. DM has forgotten what they do. They're like mini grenades, right? She throws a bead, but misses. It expands into a 10-foot radius spear that encapsulates the corpse of a red-shirted guard within a bubble of pure force. Nothing gets in or out except air. Oosh. She then passes out the other beads and the Balor repositions using teleportation. He willingly surrounds himself by the PCs because when his turn rolls around, they're gonna be on fire. But the druid gets to her turn first. She tosses the beat of force. This time, expands around the Balor. Everyone cheers. The Balor can't wait for its turn. It's really strong. It can definitely succeed on a strength check to get out. Just gotta wait a few more sec. So, the bubble only weighs a pound, no matter what's in it. Can I roll it into that teleportation circle? Asks the druid player. Of course she can. The Balor looks like a sad hamster in a ball as it gets rolled into the circle. The mad wizard spends his turn casting a teleport spell. And in a flash, the Balor is gone. Oh, that was a good idea, says the wizard. I should have thought of that. And that's how my players unceremoniously turn my boss monster into a capsule monster and send it right back to hell. I was surprised, but really proud. I mean, come on, that's awesome. Besides, they still have the Lady of Blades to deal with. Edit, some spelling issues and a correction about the intent of the cleric. Gotta catch them all, D&D! &D. And that's our story. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more future content. Also, if you would kindly follow the socials posted in the description, that would be amazing. As always, be good, be great, be awesome.